Welcome back to another Python tutorial. In today's video, we're going to start working on a new Pi game. And this one is going to resemble the classic arcade game, Space Invaders. So let's go ahead and start by taking a look. Once we finish, it's going to look something like this. So we have a spaceship down at the bottom that we can control with the arrow keys. Pressing spacebar shoots a missile. If that missile hits one of the white squares up top, then it destroys it. We also have bunkers that slowly get destroyed as missiles hit them. Lastly, we have a health system at the bottom. And whenever the ship gets hit by a missile, it loses some of its health. Okay, let's go ahead and dive in and get started. Okay, so what we're going to start with in this video is just getting the basic layout of Pi Game, and then we'll start working on creating some of the objects. So what we're going to do first is we're going to say import Pi Game. This imports the Pi Game library so that we can use it. Next, we're going to say Pi Game dot init. This initializes Pi Game. Next, we're going to create a window for our game, and we're going to do that by defining a variable called Win which will stand for window and we're going to set this equal to pi game dot display dot set underscore mode and here we're going to have two sets of parentheses inside the second set of parentheses we're going to put the dimensions for our window and we're going to make this game 750 by 750 After that, we're going to give our window a caption, and we're going to do that by saying pygame.display.set underscore caption. Inside the parentheses, we're going to put a string, and we're going to call our window Space Invaders. If you'd like to call your window something else, that's completely fine. Just change it right here. After that, we're going to define some of the colors that we're going to be using in our game. So we're going to be using the color white. And the color white is equal to 255, 255, and 255. This is the red, the green, and the blue value. We're also going to be using green. So we're going to say green is equal to, and it's going to be 0 for the red part, 255 for the green part, and 0 for the blue part. We're also going to be using the color red, which is equal to 255 for the red part and 0 for the other parts. After that, we're going to start working on the main loop for our game. So we're going to define a variable called run, and we're going to set that equal to true. Then we're going to say while run. The first thing we're going to put inside this loop is we're going to say pygame.time dot delay and then for now we're going to put 100 and depending on the speed of your computer and how things look to you you may need to adjust this to a bigger or smaller number just depending on how things look so if things look a little bit laggy or is kind of blocky as far as the movements you can change this to a smaller number and this will update the screen more often if you do change this to a smaller number then you'll have to update some of the movement values that we do later on for now though you can keep it at 100 and it should work okay next we're going to say 4 event in pi game dot event dot get and then parentheses we're going to say if event dot type is double equals pi game dot quit all capitals then what we're going to do is we're going to set run equal to false so what this section of code right here is doing, it's looking through all the different events that Pygame is storing, and it's checking to see if one of those events is a pygame.quit, which happens when the user clicks on the X button in the top right hand corner. If that happens, then it's going to set run equal to false, which will break out of this loop right here. So basically that's how we're going to end our game. After it breaks out of the loop, we need to finish off the process of closing the game by saying pygame.quit, and this time it's all lowercase. Okay, and there's just one more thing we have to do to set up the basic template for Pygame, and that is set up our redraw function. So we're just going to call it right here. So we're going to say redraw. And then up top here above the while true loop, we're going to go ahead and define that function. So we're going to say def for define. 
we're defining the redraw function. And inside this redraw function, the first thing we're going to say is win, which references our window, dot fill. And inside here, we're going to fill the window with the color black, which I realized we forgot to define up top. So up top here in our colors, we'll also define the color black. So we'll say black is equal to 0, 0, and 0. So now down here, inside of our win.fill, we can put the color black. And then after that, we're going to say pygame.display.update. And that should be all we need for now to set up the basic window. So let's go ahead and run our code and make sure everything's working. So I see that everything's working. I have my blank window and I have the caption Space Invaders. Let's go ahead and continue by creating our first object, which is going to be the ship. For all of our objects, we're going to be creating classes. So we're going to create our first class under the color red. And to create a class, we're going to say class. And then the name of our class is going to be ship. Inside the parentheses, we're going to pass pygame dot sprite with a lowercase s dot sprite with an uppercase s and what this is doing pygame has a certain section of code that deals with sprites and so what we're doing is we're passing that code into our function so that we can use some of its features inside the class we're going to start by defining a function so we're going to say def and then this is going to be double underscore init double underscore and then self And the first thing we're going to do is say pygame.sprite.sprite dot dot with an uppercase s, dot, and then double underscore, init, double underscore, and self. So these two lines of code, this one here, and this one down here, serve the same type of function as these two up here. So for the first one, we're just telling it we're going to use this information and the second one initializes it. So that's what we're doing here. We're going to use the information here and then right here we're initializing it to get it ready. Next we're going to define an image for our object. So we're going to say self dot image is going to be equal to pygame dot surface and then inside the parentheses we're going to define its dimensions which are going to be 50 by 25 so this object is going to be 50 pixels going left to right, which is the x dimension, and 25 pixels going up and down, which is the y dimension. Okay, next we're going to say self.image. So we're referencing the image we just made, and we're going to fill this with the color green. And since we defined the color green, we can just put this right here. If you didn't define the color already, then you would have to put the color code inside the parentheses here. So if I didn't define green, then I'd have to say 0, 255, comma, 0. And you have to put the color code inside of another set of parentheses. Okay, next we're going to define a rectangle region around this image. So we're going to say self.rect is going to be equal to self.image.get underscore rect. So what this is doing, it's taking the image and creating an invisible rectangle around it. So later on when we're doing collisions, we can reference this rectangle part right here and see if it collides with other rectangles. We're going to define one more variable for this class and that's going to be lives. So we're going to say self dot lives is going to be equal to five. So I'm starting off my ship with five lives, but you can change this to whatever amount of lives you want to do. We're going to create another function for this class here. And this one is going to be the draw function. So we're going to say def for define and then draw. We're going to pass the variable self. And then inside of this function, we're going to say win, which is our window, dot blit, which is one way to draw things on the screen. Inside the parentheses, we're going to draw the image. And then where we're going to draw that is self dot rect dot x for the x position and then the same thing for the y position. Now that we've defined the class, let's go ahead and make an object from this class and display it on the screen. 
To do that, we're going to say ship is equal to the class. And then we need to define its position, so it's x and it's y. So we're going to say ship dot rect. So this is the rectangle part of the ship dot x is going to be equal to 375. And then its y position is going to be equal to 650. So what we're doing here is we're creating a ship object using the class we just defined. And then inside of our redraw function, we're just going to write ship dot draw. So every time it goes through the loop, it's going to redraw the ship at its new position. So now we have our same blank window, but now we have our ship on the screen. Lastly, before we end with this video, let's go ahead and make it so that we can move our ship left and right. We're going to do that under the while run loop. So what we're going to do first is we're going to say key is equal to pi game dot key dot git underscore pressed. And this line right here is in line with the for loop up top here. So just double check when you're writing this line that it's in the same line as the for loop we defined above. Next, we're going to say if key square bracket pi game dot uppercase k underscore left. So this is referencing the left arrow on your keyboard. If that key is pressed, then what we're going to do is we're going to say ship dot rect dot x is going to be plus equals negative 10. For this part right here, you can also say minus equals 10, but I just want to keep it plus equals so that it's consistent with my other lines. Okay, so that'll handle the left arrow. Next, for the right arrow, it's very similar. We're going to say if key square bracket pi game dot k underscore right. When this arrow is pressed, we need to move the other direction. So if this one was negative 10, to move the other direction, we need to add 10. We're going to do that by saying ship dot rect dot x is going to be plus equals 10. So now let's go ahead and run the code and see if we have the movement right. Okay, so I have my window with my ship. When I press the left arrow, the ship moves to the left. When I press the right arrow, then it moves to the right. Okay, so this is going to be it for this video. In the next video, we're going to continue working on drawing objects on the screen and continue working on our Space Invader game. I hope you enjoyed and stay tuned for the next one.